All right, this is lesson 31, graphing quadratics. We're going to show you how to graph again, because this is uh, going to be on your next test. Not the makeup test, but the next test. Yesterday, we talked about the discriminant, right? The discriminant's really important because it gives us an idea of how many solutions there are, how many roots, OK? It's either two real solutions, one real solution, or two imaginary solutions. And you heard that lesson from Mr. Wakeley yesterday, yes? Did you all get it? Okay, if you didn't get it, then go online and listen to my lesson one more time, okay? They're all there. All right, so that's the uh, discriminant. So when we're graphing, it's good to know the discriminant or kind of have an idea how to figure it out because if we're looking at an equation, we're like, I wonder how many solutions there are, how many times it crosses the x-axis, and you're graphing, it doesn't touch the x-axis, then you know, okay, I did something wrong, okay? Here are the steps for today. These are the steps from a couple weeks ago. Lots of steps to graph. Here we go. Number one and two. So number one. Okay, the first thing I'm looking at when I'm doing numbers one and two is, it says graph and solve, so I want to make sure A, B, and C are in order. So A is one. We know that A, B, and C are in order. We got A is one, B is negative eight, C is 15, right? A, B, and C. Do you all agree? Yeah. Okay. So. You start with negative b over 2a on the side because that's good. we always have to start with negative b over 2a to find our vertex point. So we put negative b over 2a, so it's going to be negative, negative 8, because b is negative 8, so it's going to be negative, negative 8 over 2 times a. a is 1. And then I solve negative, negative 8 is positive 8 over 2. Positive 8 over 2 is actually 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Okay? Then I would make an XY table someplace on my paper before I start graphing. And we're saying that 4 is where a vertex is, so it's going to be in the middle, okay? So 4, and we want to figure out where's the vertex point starting. So I'm going to plug 4, this 4, back into my equation, okay? So wherever it's X, I'm putting 4 in. So 4 squared is going to be 16. Negative 8 times 4 is negative 32, and then plus 15, right? And then I'm figuring this out. 16 minus 32 is negative 16. Negative 16 plus 15 is negative 1, okay? So then I know that my vertex is at 4, negative 1. So I'm going to plot that point. Did you all get that so far? Yeah. Okay. All right. So since since it's uh, that's my vertex point, the other clue I want to look at is a a is one and it's positive one. So this is a hint from before you should know from algebra one. But when a is one or positive, if a is positive, the graph will open up. Okay. If a is negative, it'll open down. Is a positive or negative here? Positive. Positive. That means in my mind I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna it's gonna look something like it's gonna look something like this, right? That's not what it's going to look like, but it's going to look, it's going to open up, right? Not down, all right? So since it's going to open up, I'm going to pick a couple bigger points, a couple small points from four. So we're going to pick five and six and three and two. And these are adjacent points, and we want to plug them in. So first thing we're going to do is look at three, putting three into our original equation. So we got three squared is equal to nine. Negative eight times three is negative 24 plus 15. Okay, 9 minus 24 is negative 15. Negative 15 plus 15 is 0. Okay, so we're going to put 3, 0. I'll go plot it over here. 3, 0. Boom. Okay, next one is 2. Plotting or uh, solving for 2 now. So if I put 2 into my equation, 2 squared is 4. Negative 8 times 2 is negative 16 plus 15. Okay, negative 16 plus 15 is negative 1, so we got 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. Okay, 2, 3 is another point. So I go to 2, 3, that's where my point should be. You follow me so far? Yep. Okay, and I know that my quadratic graph should be symmetrical, like our faces are symmetrical, everything's equal on the opposite side. Since I have um, a graph up here that should be symmetrical, I know my vertex is kind of like where the middle is, right? If I were to draw like a line down the middle, that means 
all of these points should reflect over, right? So the w easy way to do this is the following. You just go on your table and you copy these over. 3, 0. So it's going to be 5, 0. And then you put this 3 by the 6. Okay? So And then plot those points. So we go 5, 0 and 6, 3. And then we know that our graph is supposed to look like a U, not a V. So it's supposed to look like a nice U. So curve that graph at the end and then all the way up draw some arrows because technically this graph can go on forever and that's it okay that's how you graph that's the goal of this lesson now if I were to ask you also for the solutions let's just look at the solutions anyways there's a solution right here that's a root so you would say x is equal to 3 and there's a root right here this is x is equal to 5 okay but that's not the point of the lesson the point of the lesson is to graph okay did you all get how to graph? Yes. Okay. That's number one. Watch me do number two. One more time. Number two, we got A, B, and C. They're all in order already. A is negative one. B is negative six. C is negative seven. Okay, so I start with negative B all over 2A. So we got B is our negative six. So it's going to be negative B or negative negative six all over two times A, which is two times negative one. Okay. So we got positive 6 over negative 2. Positive 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. That means an, on this xy table, I'll just do this down here at the bottom. Our vertex point is at negative 3. So let's plug in negative 3 all into this equation up here. Negative 3 squared is 9, but we have a negative sign of, with a negative sign in the front, right? Because negative 3 squared is 9 with a negative sign in the front. Then we got negative 6 times negative 3, which is going to be positive 18, minus 7. Nine minus, or negative 9 plus 18 is 9 minus 7, which is equal to 2. So our vertex point is at negative 3, 2. Okay? So I'm going to plot that negative 3, 2. And I'm thinking in my head, is it open up or down? A is equal to what? Positive or negative? Negative, so it opens up or down? Yeah. Down. So in my mind, I know that it's going to open down. It's not going to look like that. It's just going to open down, okay? But we want to be precise in math. We want it to look right. So we're going to pick a couple points to the left and to the right. So we got negative 3. Let's pick a couple bigger points, which is going to be negative 2, negative 1, a couple of smaller points, negative 4, negative 5, right? So let's do the easier problems that have smaller absolute values. So negative 2. Let's put in negative 2 into our original equation. So we got negative 2 squared is positive 4, but we have a negative sign in the front, so it's going to be negative 4. Then we got negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12 minus 7. Okay? Negative 4 plus 12 is positive 8. 8 minus 7 is 1. So we know one of our points is going to be negative 2, 1. Okay? So I'll go to negative 2, 1. Okay. Continuing here. Uh, negative 1. Negative 1 squared is going to be 1, but we have a negative sign in the front. Then we have negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6 minus 7. Negative 1 plus 6 is positive 5. Positive 5 minus 7 is equal to negative 2. So we got a point here, negative 1, negative 2. So we go to negative 1, negative 2. There should be a point right there. And just by looking at this, is it opening down? Does it look like it's opening down? Yes. Yeah, it does. That means I'm doing it correctly so far. Okay? So I know that it's supposed to look symmetrical, so that means there should be a line down the middle, kind of like that, right? We should have a line down the middle. And we do. So that means these points could be reflected over. So the easy way to do that is go back to your table and copy these over here. Okay? And then you just plot those points. And then you, you're ready to graph. Okay, so you just draw a nice curvy graph. Looks like a U, not a V. And that's it, okay? And we actually did these exact same problems a couple weeks ago. Okay? Does it make more sense today? I hope so. All right? So that's a long, longer uh,
demonstration of this, but really important that you know how to do this, okay? And tomorrow I'll actually show you a shortcut because there's actually a pattern here. I don't know if you're noticing any similarities between these two, but as you're writing these down, think to yourself, are there any similarities between both of these graphs if you were to look at them, okay? But right now I'd like you to write this in your notes, everything, okay? Even the work, okay? Go. So number three, let's start this up. Number three, okay? A is equal to what? A is what? B? Okay, C? Good, so A is 2, B is 4, C is 0. There is no C, so we're not even going to worry about that. Okay, what should we always start with in all our problems? Okay, good, we have to find out what our to find out what our vertex is. So we start with negative b over 2a. So we just take negative b, which is negative 4 over 2 times 2, or 2a, negative 4 over 4. Negative 4 divided by positive 4 is negative 1. Okay? So then we make an xy table. We'll do it right here, adjacent to the graph. And we're going to have negative 1 as our input, right? Okay. We're going to put negative 1 into our original equation. Okay. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Okay. So what is 2 minus 4? Negative 2. Okay. So our vertex point is at negative 1 negative 2. Question now, does this graph open up or down? Down. Uh, What's A? Positive. Positive. positive, so it opens up, right? Okay, good. Let's pick a couple of bigger points. So a couple of bigger points are 0 and 1, and a couple of smaller <laughs> points is negative 2 and negative 3. Bless you. you. Hope you covered your mouth. So let's pick uh, the next, let's pick the easier points. I could pick negative 2, but that's bigger or that's a higher opposite value than zero. So let's put zero in. Okay, we're putting zero in now into our equation. Okay, zero squared is? Zero, zero times two is? Zero. Four times zero is? Zero. zero plus zero? Yes, I love zero. It's the best. Best in the West, okay? One. Okay, one squared is? 1 times 2, positive 4 times 1 is 2 plus 4, 6, right? What do we know about quadratic graphs in regards to their shape? They are symmetrical, good. So you, we would copy these, oh, excuse me, copy these over here. So we're going to put 0 here and 6 up here, okay? So let's plot our points. I want to see your graphs. I'll give you about a minute to graph it, okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Put that back up there for you. Okay. Again, on this one, you have points here, here. Now, there's also a pattern to this, but you would have to calculate this. And tomorrow I'll show you the pattern. Okay, so that's number three. Let's do number four now. Number four looks pretty hard, but remember, your numbers aren't supposed to get too big, right? Because even though it says negative 16 and negative 33, don't flip out, okay? Because look at what, how big the numbers here are, your, are on your x and y axis. How big does your number get on your x axis here? Negative seven, right? And how big does your number get here on the, on the y, y axis? Good. So you shouldn't get any bit, bigger numbers than that, right? Okay. So, let's start with our first step. What's our first step? Negative b over 2a. Good, negative b over 2a. Okay, so our b in this case is? Good, so it's going to be negative negative 16 over 2 times a. Our a is? Negative 2, so it's going to be 2 times negative 2. Simplify, we got negative negative 16 is positive 16 over 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 16 divided by negative, negative four. 4 is? 
me to four. Okay, good. So that's our, uh, that is going to be where our vertex starts. So we got x, y table. I'll put it down on the bottom here, and we have negative four as our input. Okay, let's put negative four into our original equation. Okay, okay, negative four squared is sixteen times negative two is negative thirty two. Okay. Don't freak out. I know it's going to seem big. Okay. Negative 16 times negative 4 is? 64. Positive 64. Okay. Minus 33. And you might think, wow, that's really crazy. But let's work this out. Negative 32 plus 64 is? 32. 32. And then 32 minus 33 is? Negative 1, right? So that means if I were to put a negative 4, I get negative 1. That's our vertex point. Okay, so then I would graph that, all right? Just a prediction on this graph for everyone. Does this graph open up or down? down. How do we know it opens down? A is, a is negative, exactly, okay? So since it opens down, we're going to predict in our minds it's supposed to look something like that. It's not going to look like that at all, but. Okay. Pick a couple bigger points and a couple smaller points. You got negative four, negative one. So let's pick two small, smaller points. It's uh, negative five, negative six, and negative three, negative two. Which one should I work with? What number should I input first? Two and three. Two and three, right? Okay. Let's put in negative three first. Okay. Negative three squared is nine, nine times negative two is negative eighteen. Okay. Then we got negative 16 times negative 2 is positive 32 minus 33, right? What's 32 minus 33? Negative 1. What's negative 18? Oh, that does not look right. Something's wrong here. Oh, I made a huge mistake. This was horrible. Bad, Mr. Rinkwitz. Bad. Shame on you. Okay, let's try this again. Negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. All right? Negative 16 times negative 2 is positive 32 minus 33. 32 minus 33 is negative 1. Negative 8 minus 1 is negative 9. That still doesn't sound right. That's really the last one, though. Oh, yeah, negative 9. So this is supposed to be negative 2 here. That's why. I did negative 2, so we got negative 9. Good. Okay. Thank you. Well done. Okay, negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. Negative 48 times negative 3 is positive 48. Or negative 16 times 3 is positive 48 minus 33. Eight, negative 18 plus 48 is positive 30 minus 33 is negative 3. Okay. So those, that's the hardest part right there is getting through those calculations. Okay. I'm going to stop there for this part of the problem. I want you to finish it off for me, please. Remember, it's supposed to look like a U. And it's hard to draw it. But anyways, on this example... If I were to ask you what are the solutions, what are they? Zero? No real solutions, but how many solutions are there? Two imaginary, how do you know that? Okay, they're not touching a line, that's one, uh, that's one hint on the graph. And the other thing is if you put the discriminant in, you would figure out it's a negative discriminant, right? Okay, so that's from yesterday. All right, that'll conclude this lesson, so if you need to look at it, watch the video.